What's the name? Helmut. Early in the morning, we boarded the Mercedes 4x4 truck and set off for a morning drive to search for these desert elephants, led by our guide, Helmut. These ones are more adapted to this desert environment. The desert elephants, they are a bit smaller than other elephants, but their front legs are higher than the back legs. They are more looking like this. Ah, okay. It's because that they are walking very long distances. That's why they have a lot of longer legs to come. Desert elephants, or desert adapted elephants, are not a distinct species of elephant, but are African bush elephants, Loxon donta africana, that have made their homes in the Namib and the Sahara deserts in Africa. In the Uchab River area, male elephants have tusks, but about a third of the female elephants here are tuskless. Adult bull desert elephants are usually solitary and they roam over very large areas. It was believed at one time that the desert elephants were a subspecies of the African bush elephant, but this is no longer thought to be the case. Desert dwelling elephants were once more widespread in Africa than they are now and are currently only found in Namibia and in Mali. These elephants have developed certain adaptations for desert life and tend to have relatively broader feet, longer legs and smaller bodies than other African bush elephants. They are herbivorous and their diet varies with the time of year. They may walk up to 70 kilometers a night to find water points, sometimes in deep sand, which is the cause for the bigger feet and the longer front legs. Adult bull elephants can eat about 250 kilograms or 550 pounds of fodder a day and drink about 160 liters or about 42 US gallons of water, but they can also go without water for up to three days at a time. to migrate from one waterhole to another following traditional routes which depend on the seasonal availability of food and water. Fortunately, these elephants have a steady supply of water at the borehole or well provided by the local farmers and the Brandberg White Lady Lodge. After lunch, we got into our 4x4s and drove a small distance to the Brandberg National Monument. We took off on the strenuous trek to the small rock overhang deep in the Brandberg to see the White Lady and the other very impressive paintings. Growing up in South Africa, I was always intrigued by the small yellow people who lived in the desert called Bushmen or Sun. As an anthropology student in college in South Africa, we studied among others these primitive inhabitants of the Kalahari and the Namib desert areas of South Africa, Botswana and Namibia. I was always impressed by the primitive but amazing art of these people. Their history left for us to study on countless rock faces and in caves, some of them painted as much as seven to 10,000 years ago. I have always known of the White Lady of the Brandberg, so understandably I was very excited that I would get to see this panel of ancient art today. The subject of this iconic painting has been the source of controversy for quite some time. In 1917, a German geologist by the name of Reinhard Mark discovered this panel in this rock shelter. He was convinced the figure in white was a female, so he named it the White Lady of the Brandberg. Today it is assumed that the White Lady is actually a medicine man. He holds a bow in one hand and perhaps a goblet in the other, and because of the bow and the gemspot, the oryxes, the painting has also been interpreted as a hunting scene. But the real giveaway? Mark and many other researchers for almost a century failed to notice the figure's penis. We made 
made it back to the White Lady Brandberg Lodge in time for some drone action and a cocktail before our last dinner at this beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs>